Cornell Cooperative Extension of Orange County presents 4-H Incubation Embryology Online. This is the final episode of Frank and Beans. Bring your ticks to the farm. As Riley and Frank just said, it's our final episode. We are so excited that we got to share this experience with you. But in our final chapter of our journey, we're gonna hear from Mr. Stevens at Stevens Organic Farm in Sussex, New Jersey. So let's hear what Mr. Steven has to say and all about what his plans are for our chickens and our turkeys. My name is Ted Stevens. I've been living on this farm for almost 50 years. I farm with my wife and my two sons. And right now we're concentrating on trying to get the dairy business uh, profitable, let's say. And uh, we've had to make some adjustments along the way. Okay, so Stevens Farm has been certified organic since 1991. Um, in that time, since 1991, we've raised uh, chickens, turkeys, uh, we've had pigs, uh, some sheep, we've had goats here, but that was even longer ago. Mo mostly um, our income comes from, the farm income comes from selling hay and uh, crops that we raise. Sometimes we raise more produce, um, which we haven't done in a number of years. This year we'll once again be raising produce. Uh, we'll also be selling hay. We'll also be raising corn and soybeans. Um, we have heifers that are ready to freshen uh, shortly. I thought they would have freshened by now. Um, we did not breed them AAI, so we don't have a definite date. We just know when we put the, the bull in with them. Uh, what so, got you interested in black Australop chickens? Say again? What got you interested in the chickens? Well, or this breed specifically? I don't, honestly, I don't remember how long we've been raising chickens. Um, and for the most part, we've had either Rhode Island Reds or the black Australorps. The first black Australorps that we raised, I bought from a, a friend of mine, uh, and we were actually quite pleased with them for a number of reasons. I guess because they're being because of their color, um, the cold doesn't bother them as much as we'll say normal chickens. Um, they're a lot calmer than most other breeds of chickens that I've been. A, in, in, uh, had any experience with. Um, so I like the, bla the black oyster lurps. I, I also like the Rhode Island Reds because it's a bigger egg, but uh, they can also be real nasty with each other too. Yeah. So we once again have oyster lurps and I really have no problem with staying with a calmer breed like that. So what is the plan for certification? When will they be certified? The chicks are, if they're raised from day one organically, they can be certified organic. They'll be certified the, the next time the inspector comes. We have to fill out, um, well, we did the initial certification, which was way back in 1991. Things have changed a little bit along the way, but basically it's still the same. Um, we have to, every three years now, well, we have to uh, reapply for certification every year annually. Every th three years, we have to do an update. Uh, so anything that's been changed uh, has to be noted. It's just a lot more paperwork. Okay. By the time I'm done with a three-year update, it's about that thick. And that's not an exaggeration. Yeah. Um, the inspector comes once a year, usually in the fall, sometimes the winter. What are your plans with the eggs? Are you guys planning on selling them or just for home use? Well, 
we want the, the main reason to get started with the chicks the chickens that we have we've only gotten a small number of them this year so that we would have eggs for the house because we have to have i think more than six of them to get them certified so that was probably the main the the secondary main reason uh, to have chicks so that we would be able to get them certified organic at our next inspection um most likely we'll end up with more chickens in the, in the near future uh, we don't have any pigs now but we're we're trying to find pigs that are reasonably priced mm -hmm. um once we can do that we will have we'll be in the pig pig business again which i'm anxious to do uh, because i enjoy the pigs mm -hmm. If you had any advice for our future generation looking into farming, what would it be? I've been doing the organic, we'll call it the organic thing for so long. It just seems like, uh, we'll call it second nature. It's just, you know, it's a lot of paperwork and all that kind of stuff. But if after you do it for that many years, you just, you, you better be used to it. And I am. Uh, it would still be great because the number of acres that we farm right now, I think we're farming around 500 acres. Um, as the acreage goes up, it's that much more paperwork. So hopefully sometime this year after things settle down with getting everything planted, um, I'll be able to devote more time to streamlining the paperwork. Um, as far as anybody that wants to farm today, all I can say is go for it. Um, you don't have to start out with a million dollars if you don't want to. I'm sure you could if you were able to. Um, a friend of mine who grew up on a farm and farmed on his own after that uh, for some time always said, if I won the lottery, I would farm till all the money was gone. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I won't lie to you. It's it's not easy, and just be prepared if if that's the path you choose. Perfect. Okay, Mr. Stevens, thank you so much for doing our interview for our youth today. We'll check back in with you to see how our chicks are growing. We're really gonna miss our chickens and turkeys, but they're gonna go to a great home. And. I miss all the chickens and butterball! <laughs>well everybody it's our final episode thank you so much for spending this crazy adventure with riley frank and myself we had a great time educating and learning all about incubation embryology and different breeds of chickens, geese, and turkeys. Thanks for joining us. Catch us on our next online adventure.